What's going on traders? It's Ricky with Tech with Solutions. Thank you guys again for joining us for another Sunday Stock Talk. For those that are joining us for the first time and have never heard of Tech with Solutions or any of the kind of videos that we create here uh, within my YouTube channel, I go live every day, Monday through Friday. I usually go live during pre-market hours and I talk about stocks that the people that join our live stream and that are part of Tech with Solutions request for me to you know, analyze. I pretty much just give my own whole, um, my own thought process, and pretty much I provide a, a free and simple platform. It's called TechBit Solutions. The Facebook link down below will guide you to our Facebook group. You simply have to have a Facebook account. Again, it is free, and it allows you to network because it has on the top pinned post um, a link to the group chats. And within the group chats um, and all the different you know platforms we have available, it's now over 36,000 members worldwide. The thing that we do best is we provide a, a you know simple and free platform for everyone to, to share best practices and to share mistakes in effort to promote overall growth. What Sunday Stock Talk is designed to do is market opens tomorrow, right? Monday through Friday. And we want to make sure that we have at least or are up to date on certain stocks and kind of like you know, what to be aware of um, and what to look out for. I'm just, again, going to be sharing my whole thought process. We have three rules with TechBoot Solutions, and that is you only invest in what you understand. You never invest based on anyone else's opinion, and you always have a plan when investing, meaning you always know where you're buying, where you're selling, and where you're going to be cutting your losses. Although they might be, although they might sound like very simple rules, really think about each of those three rules, and I think that can guide you guys in the right direction. And I'm pretty sure that thousands of people within the TechBoot Solutions community can vouch for that. those specific just tips that we you know, advise our traders and just new traders that are getting into the market that make sure that you, know, you, you only invest in what you see value in. You know, there's nothing wrong with exposure, but you know, always make sure that you can always manage your risk. So let's get right to it. I have the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform, which is the platform that I'm gonna be sharing. For all those that are going to be answering frequently asked questions, I would suggest for you to visit my channel once this video is over and for you guys to look through my helpful video playlist and I answer a number of frequently asked questions. I'm sure that I have a video for the specific question that you guys are going to be asking just because you know we've made so many videos. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm going to say what's up to a couple people and then go from there. So let's go ahead and people are already telling me to slow down. I actually thought I was talking pretty slow. All right, let's go ahead and All right, I'm trying to read some of the comments you guys are Hello Ricky Shade. I'm guessing are you Shade or um cuz I've direct messaged someone that's Shade within the Discord group. What's up Brosov? What's up brother? What's up Bobby? What's up M Naka? What's up Preston? What's up Frank Vlogs? <laughs> what's up angel what's up uh net net nell uh what's, oh man you guys have some difficult names all right um so let's let's get to it so i know a lot of you guys are going to be suggesting certain stocks right now that's not what i'm going to be looking at i'm going to be giving my own opinion and we did this last week and i think a lot of people enjoyed it is i'm going to be talking about just three stocks three to five stocks that i see potential in i'm going to be sharing my whole thought process and then i'm going to dedicate time and answer um, or ask you guys what it is that you would like me to analyze so right now i'm not going to be answering any of your guys's questions or suggestions for specific stocks so just give me a couple minutes um, and then i'll get right to your questions so What's going on, guys? I see a bunch of the guys that I always talk to. What's up, Martin? What's up, Jose? What's up, Chris? What's up, all you guys? Thank you again. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And again, I'm going to be performing technical analysis. This is, again, me just sharing my opinion. In no way does this mean that this is what you guys have to invest in. And if you don't see value in it, then simply don't trade it. Again, this is just for exposure and for you guys to see how I break down a stock. And I hope that it can kind of like you know, spark some interest in some of you, um, or at least guide you in the right direction on my strategy and my approach when it comes to trading. So this is something that I try to do with every single stock that I do uh, try to invest in before I actually do. Um, and a majority of the stocks that I'm going to be talking about that I see value in are not penny stocks. They're multi-billion-dollar companies or multi-million-dollar companies, and definitely not penny stocks. So I just want to make sure that I disclose that. Um, but again, only invest in what you see value in, and we can go from there. So AMD approaching, well, level two is useless right now, uh, but AMD, again, approaching that $13 support. Guys, I'm still in AMD. I messed up. Um, I don't want to say I messed up. I'm, I'm down very little um, from where I bought in at $13.30. I still think it has potential to come back up to this $14 um, resistance. But again, if it goes below $13, I'll cut my losses, and it's as simple as that. I'm going to stick to my plan because I know 
That's what I planned out originally. Um, and the reason why was if we do 180 day analysis, AMD has had a trend where it was seeing consistent signs of upward momentum and bouncing at the support line that we drew and, and hitting and peaking out at this resistance line. So, you know, we'd buy at the support, sell at the resistance, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. And it was this common trend. We drew this trend line and it followed through until now. Again, if it breaks below 13, then it's showing signs of downward momentum and I want to cut my losses and then move on until it starts showing signs of a bounce. Then that's when I can add more to my position um, or end up selling at $14 and stuff like that. So that's my breakdown for AMD. It's not one that I, it's kind of this week is going to be the make it or break it for AMD when it comes down to that $13 support. Um, and the reason I say that is because if it drops below 13, then, then we're going to have, you know, I mean, it hasn't dropped below $13, I think in the past 20 days. And I think that's a very strong support. As you guys can see, it's bounced there before. If we simply focus on this area right here, it bounced at like 1315 and hit highs of 1570. It came back down. It's approaching the support. It looks like it's trying to flatline. But again, I'm not going to hope for the best. I'm going to stick to my plan. My plan was to cut my losses if it goes below 13. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, and it's as simple as that. So I don't have too much invested. I didn't go in too heavy on AMD. Um, but if it breaks below 13, then I'll cut my losses and I'll move on. So this is definitely one that I'm going to keep my eyes on. But if it goes below 13, then that kind of just gives me a better understanding that I could have done a better job, you know, buying at the bounce and not on a downward trend. So it's all about learning from your best practices and your mistakes as well. So that's what I have to say about AMD, Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat's been you know, just horrible since it's dropped below $17. Uh, it's been on a consistent downward trend. I have my alert set if it breaks above 14, um, as that would indicate, you know, a solid bounce, as we could see that from the bounce that it had really at $12. Um, it's been moving up since then, but it really means like, you know, this $14 resistance was a really solid resistance that it wasn't able to break on this fake bounce. So that's why I have my, um, my alert set here, if it breaks above 14, then that would be a good indicator that, you know, it broke above 14, which was, you know, an old support, which is a new resistance. And therefore it becomes a new support once it breaks above. So if we can buy, and if it holds above 14, then that would give me a better understanding that Snapchat it's on its way back up. Now, JNUG, JNUG is one that I'm looking at today. Um, and I want to explain myself on this one. Um, Okay, so I'm going to explain myself on JNUG, and I just want you guys to understand why it is that. If you guys can see right here, I have you know, I have written out that JNUG is now approaching the support. And what I mean by that is JDST was the stock that I was talking about last month. What I mean by that is JDST is the inverse ETF of JNUG, meaning that when JNUG goes up, JDST goes down. JNUG was super high. It was almost at like, what was it? At like a $20 resistance. That's that's really what it has. It has a, about a $20 resistance, and then it has a support at about $14 to $16. That's usually where it bounces at. Like $14 to $15 is usually where it bounces at based on previous trends. And I'm going to show you guys this all right now. But the reason that now I'm moving my kind of my attention to JNUG is because JDST is now hitting its resistance at $70, which it previously had a support at $60 that I called out all last week. And we did extremely well. There's a large number of people that saw the trend that I saw when it came down to investing in, J, uh, in JDST. And I only caught a taste of what JDST was able to, you know, make within the past couple of days because I saw more opportunity elsewhere, but I didn't do, you know, what I was expecting. Um, and didn't it did, the stocks that I invested in didn't perform the way that I, that I expected. So JDST ended up doing a lot better than I expected and increased in price much quicker. This this increase from $6 to $7, it did it in like two to three days. And that's not normal for JDST. So there's one of two things that I'm thinking. JDST is either going to continue to rise and break above that $70 resistance, or it's going to hit that $70 resistance, or not even break 69 and then end up seeing a pullback back to its $60 support. So because if JDST starts seeing a downward trend, then that means JNUG is going to start seeing an upward trend. And that's why I'm calling out, and again, only invest in what you see value in, but that's why now I'm or moving my attention to JNUG instead of JDST, because I think JDST is more overbought and JD, uh, JNUG is more oversold right now. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my screen and show you guys exactly what it is that I mean. So I hope that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't make sense and you don't see the value, then simply don't invest it. So don't invest in it. Is right here. So if you guys could see based on previous trends right now, JDS 
she is approaching $16, which is a previous support. As you guys can see, it does go below 16, but it doesn't go very far below 16. I mean, it has before, so just know that, right? But based on previous trends, 15 to $16 is a pretty low point compared to the resistance that it usually has about 20. So do you guys see that trend that I'm seeing? Look, it previously peaked out at about 19 to highs of like 19.24 and then started seeing this downward trend. And now because it looks like it's trying to bounce, it doesn't mean that it's going to bounce 100%. I actually think it's going to get a little bit closer to this $16 support, if not break a little bit below it. But I'm just saying the potential, the, the potential for profit at $16 or $15, it's much greater to be able to come back up to this, uh, to this $19 resistance than JDST, which is right now, based on where we called, again, we called out the support at 60 because that was a previous support and previous support. Again, it was at a lower point based on what usually trades at, and $70 is a, more, is a resistance. As you can see, it's peaked out there before, it's peaked out here before. It doesn't hold very well above 70. It doesn't mean that it won't break above 70 because it definitely has done before, it just means that it usually doesn't. It usually peaks out there and then sees a downward trend. So I'm going solely based on trends and I'm going solely based on, you know, if, if JDST breaks 70 and starts to hold, then obviously I'm going to move my attention back to JDST. But I think the potential for profit for JDST on where it stands right now from, you know, $69 to 70 is much smaller and the risk is much higher for it to start seeing a downward trend in comparison to JNUG and it's and it's potential for profit from you know 16 to 19 compared to like you know J, uh, JNUG. So I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, then again, simply don't invest it again. It just means that I see more potential right now in the price point that JNUG where J, where JNUG is at compared to JDST. Um, but again, JDST or JNUG has gone below $16 before or uh, $15. So just know that. But $15 usually tends to be a good buy. Doesn't mean that it's going to be 100%. It just means that based on history, it tends to be a good buy. So that's going to be one of my top picks for this upcoming week. Be a pretty, um, I think a pretty nice pick is the reason that I think SQ is going to be a pretty nice pick is, um, well, this is a square million dollar company. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Um, but the reason that I see potential in this one is if you look at a 20-day analysis, if it, uh, no. It's been on a consistent upward trend. It did hit a resistance at about $28, and then it saw a pullback. After its earning, earnings report, let me move a little bit closer. After I had that earnings report, up all the way back down to you know 27, it's built a pretty solid support at 25. And this is one that we've been trading consistently at the at twenty five dollars, I've called it out numerous times last week, and I and I ended up buying from twenty five and selling at highs of like twenty five sixty four. So again, not enormous margins for profit, based on the previous trend, like twenty five eighty, the common resistance it struggles to break above that. Anything above twenty five sixty, I think is butter. I think it's very easy to tell that you know it it's not unreal to be able to buy at twenty five dollars and to sell at twenty five sixty. So what margin for profit is that? Five percent. If you can lock that in every day, that's consistent proper, uh, profit and consistent growth. That's something that I'm happy with. And because I'm not under the PDT rule, I mean, I'd be able to jump in and jump out multiple times. It just comes down to investing in what you see potential in and, and managing your risk. So understanding that the support is at 25 and that the resistance is about 25 to, uh, 2560 to 2580, your potential for profit from 25 to 2560 is much greater. Does that mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that it, it can go below 25. Well, obviously it has gone below 25 and that's why it comes down to managing your risk. Cutting losses short, keeping losses small and making sure you lock in profits as they rise. I think it's just been a very common trend that it bounces pretty well at $25 as you can see here and it's starting to see an upward trend. I think it has more margin for profit once it breaks this resistance that it has at 2580, but it also means that if it breaks below 25 or breaks below 2470, which is the, its current lowest point, then it might continue seeing a downward trend. So you want to be careful. You want to manage your risk within your own means. But again, for my own, for, for the way that I see like potential um, for it to go back up to like simply $26, I think the potential is there. I don't think that's very unrealistic because based on its previous trend, it's been consistently showing signs of upward momentum and it has seen pullbacks. As you guys can see, it does see pullbacks, but then it continues to rise. And again, this isn't a penny stock. 
I'm not, you guys invest in what you guys see value in, um, but the trends and, and its history makes sense to me. I think because of this pullback, it's more on the oversold side, and that's why I see value in this one. Now, let's, t let's jump into that topic. And one of the first things is um, I, I'm, I wrote for this week is watch for oversold stocks. If you guys saw last week, so many companies were reporting their earnings reports, and so many companies did not perform the way people expected or did not perform what they projected to report um, or they didn't perform the way that you know they were projecting to just perform and it's as simple as that so what does that mean that's why all these companies like square and all these companies like save um, which is spirit airlines so and and so many other low cap stocks saw huge pullbacks saw huge drops and what does that mean this is just my style of trading and in no way does this mean that you guys have to do it this way but because these companies after their earnings reports they didn't perform the way that they expected people that trade based on fundamentals they're, they're the ones that are like oh man like you know this company isn't the way that isn't performing the way that you know I expected them to they're not hitting their targets so they end up selling and that's what we call you know stocks being oversold meaning that the dropping and the RSI indicator would allow you to you know understand that but again make sense of it if you understand some fundamentals of these certain stocks that you're seeing potential in all I'm saying is start to like keep an eye out for stocks that were oversold because of their earnings reports and try to identify support because of those huge drops that they had those are margins for profit because if they rise back up just to the price that they were that's sometimes you know 10 to 20 percent based on what they decreased even five to ten percent it comes down to you identifying stocks that have margins for profit because of the huge drops that they had and once they start to show signs of upward momentum set up a plan on where you're going to buy where you're going to sell and then where you're going to cut your losses if it continues to drop obviously you know if a stock you know um, put out an earnings report and then it's doing very poorly and you know just consistently is on a downward trend then you don't want to focus on those stocks focus on stocks that since their earnings reports you know saw a drop identified its support let's say like 25 so it was at trading at 27 dollars dropped to 25 dollars so it has this two dollar profit margin which is about 10 percent and then because of that drop it started showing signs of upward momentum and it's been holding above that support and that support can be where you cut your losses and if it's one to two percent from where you're going to be buying at then the risk might be worth it because your potential for profit is ten percent and your potential for loss is two percent therefore if that's something that you're comfortable investing in then it makes sense all i'm saying is because so many stocks reported so many earnings reports this past week and these past couple of weeks there's so many stocks that are oversold and they're going to slowly start climbing up it doesn't mean that every stock is going they start to continue trending back up to its you know, old support or where they used to trade at. And understanding that it comes down to you as the investor to identify that profit margin, identify that valid support, and identify that upward trend. And once you identify those three things, it can give you a better understanding that yes, these stocks are making their way back up to where they were trading at, and I see potential. And I'm gonna set up a plan on how I, you know, see um, I'm gonna manage my risk. Again, that every style of trading is different and you're going to see potential in stocks that you know I might not see potential in, and I'm going to see potential in stocks that you're not going to see potential in, and that's that's totally fine. Identify your niche, identify what you see value in, and what makes sense to you, and that's all that it needs to make sense to. You. So I just wanted to, I think, talk about that because I think not everyone is exposed to that opportunity. So I hope for some of you that makes sense to you. Um, let me know in the in the live stream chat if you guys knew about that or if that's something that you guys were planning to do anyways all right and i'm gonna um, analyze one more stock that i see value in and then go from there so let's go here so that was sq it wasn't meat meat was one that i saw value in but i'm not gonna um focus on that one i'm gonna talk about safe i know this is one that i talked about after its earnings reports it had a previous support at 50 dollars, dropped all the way down to 38 it has a pretty solid support at um, $39, but what I want to focus on is a very common trend within the past five days, um, even past 10 days that it's been doing, um, and that's right here. So the, the trend that I see is a support at 39, so it usually bounces at 39 and usually has a resistance at about 40 to 41. Let me go ahead and put the resistance here at 41. And then the support at around 39 so it usually bounces at 39 and usually peaks out at 41 so again we've identified this profit margin 
of about 5%. Again, it's nothing huge, but when it comes down to trading a multi-billion dollar company and being able to make 5% on a stock that you can manage your risk in, this might be something worth looking at. It comes down to everyone having a different style and different things that they see value in. I'm just saying, again, it's at support at 39, resistance being at 41, and then even the potential for it to go back up to its previous support, which is at 40, is much greater. So when it comes down to what I see valuing is, look, if I get in at a good price and if I manage my risk well, the potential for profit, I can day trade it and still make about 5%. And if I wanted to swing trade it and I see value in it, I'm still going to manage my risk. But because I'm buying in at such a low point, the potential for profit, so it, for it to go back up even to this 48 support, is 20%, nearly 20%, when my potential for loss, if I you know, buy in at like $39 and I cut my losses if it goes below 30, you know, let's say you know, 38, um, or even like 38.40 if it continues to break. So again, my potential for loss is 1% or less than 1%, when my potential for profit would be from 39 to, what is that, 48, would be about nearly 20%. So again, it comes down to what you see value in and how you identify the potential, setting up a plan, and if it makes sense to you, and you can manage your risk, okay, my potential for profit is greater than my potential for loss, and the trends make sense that you're not just making it up and it's realistic within the means of, you know, a couple of days or something like that, then, then go for it. If you're not comfortable trading real money, then there's simulation trading. So you can trade, you know, paper money and you can still gain real experience. So once you get a little bit more comfortable with the mechanics of day trading or swing trading, then you can, you know, make the decision if you've proven to yourself that, you know, okay, maybe investing a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars is something that I feel comfortable with because I know the importance of managing my risk and I've proven to myself that I can be a profitable day trader or a profitable swing trader. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start answering some of your guys' questions. So I'm going to start um, performing technical analysis on some of the stocks that you guys suggest for me to for that you guys suggest for me to uh, analyze. So let's go from there. I'm drinking Mountain Dew. So Ty Star says, I didn't realize the potential on oversold stocks. Thanks, Ricky. Shade. So I'm, okay, shit, uh, Ty Star, I'm pretty sure you're Shade from the Discord group. Let me know. Um, but yeah, that, that's the whole point of these videos. It's for me to share my experience and what's worked for me, an effort for you guys to be exposed to it. And if it makes sense to you, then you can make the decision to use that specific strategy within your own means, right? You know, still managing your risk and do it within your own means. And that's the whole point of, you know, networking and sharing ideas because not only am I, you know, sharing my best practices to you guys, but I get, you know, hundreds of people that direct message me what's worked for them. And then it allows me to, you know, just t try to, if you guys have seen within the past couple of days, because I've been so busy, I've been swing trading more than I've been day trading because I don't have the time to day trade within the past couple of days. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and... Um, <laughs> kettle cooked. You're freaking hilarious. Okay, so this is one thing that I do want you guys to know. So for those that are part of Tech Up Solutions, and, this, I'm at, and I'm gonna be correlating it to what you guys are talking about, Everyone keeps talking about this one specific stock. And I want you guys to know, just like when we were experiencing the, the whole point of TechBud Solutions is to um, like filter out manipulation. And so many people are talking about the same stock and there's so many new traders within our community that if I see the same stock being overhyped within our Discord group chat or within the Facebook group, I'm going to block the people or put you guys on a suspension stock. The, this is one of the things that I want you guys to understand. TechBud Solutions is not going to be another platform like StockTwits. I don't want to subjugate StockTwits and what it is, but it's it's no misunderstanding that StockTwits is is a platform where people, you know, there's a lot of good information that is shared because people are, um can can be exposed to like stocks that are trending, but it's no surprise that so many people within that platform of StockTwits are overhyping the stocks that they are personally investing in and want others to see value in it. That's not that's not what we're here for. We're here to share best practices and share mistakes. And if I see that any member within our group or any of our admins see any member within our group 
is over hyping a stock or manipulating other people to invest in the stock based on the pro based on the wordings like you know oh invest in this one you know it's gonna buy me this it's gonna do this for me understand that we will filter you out and we will block you from our group that's one of the biggest things we don't want tech solutions to be a platform where there's manipulation we want tech solutions to be a clear and simple platform and if that means that we're gonna have to lose hundreds of our that tens of thousands of members due to that then so be it. But I can guarantee you that we're not going to be dealing with these people that are overhyping these stocks. I just want you guys to know that. And with all due respect, it's something that I have to do as you know the owner of, of this group to make sure that the people that are just starting out are not manipulated or you know hyped up to invest in a stock that they don't see you know value in. Because it's no surprise that a lot of young traders or a lot of unexperienced traders can make the miss you know, just the misunderstanding of investing in stocks based on someone else, someone else's opinion when we continuously tell them that that's not something that we can do. If you guys can do me the favor as my team, as like, you know, the tech put solutions team to not overhype stocks and to simply, if you're going to talk about a stock, to, you know, you can include the ticker symbol where you're planning on buying, where you're planning on selling and why you see value in it. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're saying r ridiculous things like, you know, oh, this stock is going to buy me a mansion, guys. Like that's not what this platform is here to do. It's not here to promote, promote like, like get rich quick things or anything like that. We're here to provide realistic, you know, and uh, like exposure and opportunity. And we want it to be simple for everyone to understand. And I need your guys' help. So I hope that's, hope that's okay with you. <laughs> Jay Rob saying Ricky laying the smack down. No. And you guys know that I love you guys and what everything it is that you guys do. Um, but you guys have to understand that there's certain things because there's so many like easily just influenced members within our group that I don't want them to be taken advantage of. And that's all I want. So I hope you guys understand that. Um, so yeah, and there's so many people I don't, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to waste your guys' time and I'm sorry that I'm not dedicating time to like performing technical analysis on the stocks that you guys are asking me to, but I just wanted to just talk about the, that topic because I know so many people tune in for our Sunday stock talk and I want you guys to know that you know, I'm really here for people to like be exposed to quality information and I have to sometimes filter out people that are not here for the best interest. If you guys don't appreciate that, then that's fine, uh, but I want you guys to know that that's it. No. All right, let's do it. I'm all jacked up on the Mountain Dew Joy. You know that. All right, let's do it, guys. So I see a lot of people, um, and I'm, I'm still going to perform my technical analysis on the stocks that you guys are asking me to, so I hope you guys know that. I'm super pumped for this week. It's going to be super busy, and I'm going to be in Miami um, or in Florida and on the 11th to the 13th. So all those that are in Florida, direct message me within the group chat, and I'd love to meet up with you guys. I'm going to be there. Um, with my girlfriend and her family, so I might not be able to hang out for a very long time, but just know that I do want to meet you guys. Let's do this one, since everyone keeps talking about that one. X, X, I, I. All right. So I want someone, since you guys have so much, so since so many people, since so many people keep talking about like this stock, I want those, like I want you I want you, I want all these people that keep talking about that stock to start commenting or start commenting why they see value in it. Why is it that you see value in XXII? I, I want you to have some fundamental understanding on why you see value in it. Or at least I want to understand that you know, my RSI indicator is saying that it's way oversold or way overbought. Why would I want to invest, invest in this? The last time it was way oversold, it saw a pullback from its peak down to where it bounced at of about 20%. So why would I want to buy right now? Is it because you're investing in it right now and you want other people to continue dumping money into this one for it to continue to rise? Or is it because you have a real understanding on why the stock sees so much potential? I really want to know. All right, and, and I see value in it because three years ago they had a massive spike and they're doing the same exact thing. What does that mean? All 
All I see is it being oversold. Based on my experience, when it comes down to trading stocks like this, when it comes down to like regardless of, of how much fundamental there is behind a certain stock and, and how well it's supposed to do, hype has a lot to do with it to cause these huge increases, but just understand that the hype ends up dying out. And when it dies out, you see 20% drops like these. Understand when there's huge drops like this, it's not gonna always continue to rise, especially when it increases in the in the 20 and the tens of percents. So what I really think that's going to happen when it comes down to this $2 stock is it's most likely going to see a pullback this week. It doesn't mean that it's not going to continue showing signs of upward momentum, but I think that it's going to see a pullback probably to this $220 to $2 support. The reason I say that is if you guys see $2 was a previous resistance, which became, uh, which is most likely once it's broken, is going to come become a new support. I'd say $2.50 is the resistance. And although it's holding above that right now, I don't think it's going to hold very well above that. So I think there's going to be this pullback all the way back down to this $2 support. I think it might continue seeing signs of upward momentum, but I don't think that this is going to continue to skyrocket and not see a pullback. It just doesn't make sense based on previous trends. So I would say that because it you know, previously saw a huge increase and not, you know, it probably lost its hype and then it you know, decreased, bounced at that, yeah, Okay, let me go ahead and go a little bit further back. Okay, well, this makes sense then. Look, a previous support was $1.60. It fell below $1.60 and it went to $1.33. So it built a support, flatlined, and then saw, saw an upward trend, then had this huge pump to highs of $2. So again, it broke its previous support, which became a new resistance, $160 saw a new resistance at $2 and then saw a pullback and it bounced at 160. So it's old support became its new support. Okay. So now it bounced there. It broke above the $2 resistance, hit highs of 250 and is most likely now going to see a pullback to its old resistance, which will most likely become a new support. So I'm not saying that this doesn't see value in um, right now. I'm just saying based on where it currently stands, I don't see value in this specific stock. That's just how I'm breaking it down. If it doesn't make sense to you, then um, that's fine. Again, you invest in what you see value and that's just my own opinion. I think it's more on the overbought side and I think the hype is gonna end up dying out because I've been seeing way too many people talk about this low cap stock and when you know not enough people are buying this stock and so many people bought at such a high price, it's gonna start tanking. And then that's when, you know, when people start losing money. So why overhype it? I think I'd, it, I'd much rather wait for the bounce and obviously it's a strong stock and it sees really nice pumps. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But again, understanding that, you know, you are most likely going to see a pullback. So that's the first stock that we analyzed based on your guys' opinion. Let's go ahead and see what's next. Styles, what's up, brother? B-I-O-A. B-I-O-A. Oh my goodness. Earning report, huge drop. I like this one. Again, this is why I love chasing red stocks. I'm not, okay. I don't have this one in my watch list. I'm adding this one in my watch list. Let's see. Okay, it's earnings report did not perform the way that I expected it to. Yeah, Q2. Okay. All right, the thing that I don't like too much about this one is that obviously it had a, a support at $2. Now it broke below, what the heck, draw. Okay, it had a support at $2 and it had, you know, it was holding above pretty well above $2 and had a resistance at $3, right? As you can see. So its old support was at $3, broke below that, and then it became a new resistance. So $3 was an old support, becomes a new resistance. $2 is now the new support, but then it broke below that. So then now that's going to be the new resistance. It's still following. It's still falling down, right? Do you want to like the, this is now showing signs that it's being over that it's oversold. It's expecting a bounce. Again, am I going to go based on an indicator like RSI to indicate when I'm going to buy? Heck no, right? We don't rely just on a sole indicator. We allow the charts to do the talking. And this hasn't shown signs of upward momentum. It still has so much margin to make up to break back to that $2 support. Do I think it can make come back up to this $2 support? Or do I think that it's going to bounce and see a margin of profit? I, I think so. Um, I think it is oversold. But I think I'd much rather I'd much rather wait for it to set its support. So if its support is at 150, 
I'd much rather see it break, start breaking resistance. And once it starts breaking above 160, then I can start seeing that it's showing signs of upward momentum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my alert um, because currently in level two, there's a buy at 138. Oh, yeah. And its volume is not, okay, so its volume is definitely not there. So it's not, it doesn't see healthy amounts of volume. Um, that's definitely not a good thing. Um, but it looks like the demand or the volume really increased uh, during the closing hours, and that was good. Um, it fell to a really low point, $1.50, so maybe that's its new support, and again, $2 to be the resistance. So the potential for profit based on where it currently stands is about $25, and if it continues to drop, then why would you even invest in it? So um, I'd much rather wait for the bounce, and then uh, once I see the bounce, then I can make the decision to invest in something that is actually showing signs of, of potential. Definitely. So BIO, um, BIOA has a strong downward trend. I 100% understand that. But once it sets its support or once it starts showing signs of upward momentum, then that's when I would see value in it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to TOPS and DRYS. Those are both like falling nice, but we don't, yeah. HUSA, guys, we always talk about that one. I'll do it very quickly. I'll just do it because so many people always talk about that one. Okay. Uh, again, I don't trade stocks that are less than $1 just because that's, you know, I don't see that much potential in those specific stocks. Um, but HUSA looks like it's trying to hold above $55 or $0.55. Cents. Um, it is showing somewhat of a bounce here and a resistance at $0.60. Cents. Uh, 60 cents. So that's a nice little profit margin of nearly almost 10%. Um, but again, it does have potential to continue dropping. So I think being able to identify these, these profit margins um, or kind of these little trends on where they usually trade at. I already have people direct messaging me if I'm coming to Florida. Um, Fonsbra is asking me if I'm coming to Florida. I am coming to Florida, man. Direct message me where you're at, um, and I'd love to meet up. Do you guys see that trend? Um, it tends to like you know increase uh, and see support and resistance about every five cents. So understand that it has a support at 55 um, and a resistance at 60. So that's all I have to say. Not really anything good about the um, HUSA, um, guys. After this reverse stock split, it dropped from six dollars all the way down to one dollar and ninety cents. Does this look like a stock that you want to invest in? I mean, there's, uh, and I know what you guys are probably thinking, Ricky, but I thought you said you love chasing red stocks. There's a difference from a red stock to a stock that's been, you know, supposedly, look at this. This is not something that you want to invest in. Um, and it's been doing so many reverse stock splits, just like DRYS. What the heck? Come on. DRYS. That, look at that. That's not something that you want to invest in. That's not something that's showing growth. So why would you want to invest in it? So a bunch of reverse stock splits. Look, a one fourth, one eighth, one fifth. Can't even see it because they do that on purpose. Look, I can't even see it. I'm just kidding. But yeah, definitely don't invest. Um, I personally don't like investing in stocks that don't see um, upward momentum. It doesn't mean that they don't that, that they don't have potential for profit. Um, obviously, they do. I mean, it bounced from 120 to 150. But understand that these stocks can be easily easily manipulated, and that's definitely not something that I want to invest in. So AAOI, of course, brother. Let me go ahead and do it. AAOI. Okay, so its earnings reports are a pretty decent drop from, I like this, it's, uh, whoa, my goodness, from 90, it's had a resistance at almost $100 and dropped almost 50%. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so it was showing consistent, and that makes sense on why it dropped so much though. If you could see it had a previous support at about $60. So it might have even more margin to drop, so I'd be patient on this. But if you could see, this was a previous support. Before it had this huge bounce, this was a previous support. So, you know, this could be a whole another profit margin. But this is huge. I'm going to add this one to my watch list. I appreciate you um, suggesting this stock. Um, but again, it's, it's not showing signs of upward momentum yet, bud. Um, so it's still a falling knife. And again, you have to be patient. Wait for the bounce. The RSI indicator is saying that it's oversold. Um, and that might be the case. But again, I only like investing in stocks that once the EMA line starts to show signs of upward momentum, something similar to like, you know, this, right? So once it sees the drop and then starts to bounce up, 
I'd much rather invest in something that's appreciating in value and understanding that there's an upward trend rather than me trying to catch it at the lowest point and being greedy and end up, you know, continuously losing money. You don't want to add money to a stock that's just continuously dropping. I'd much rather be patient, wait for these breaks of resistance and um, follow up that way. So I'm definitely going to, guys, I, I think I need to do a better job. So um, when it comes to, I, th I think we have a lot of good stocks that we're talking about today. So give me one second. I'm going to have to rewatch my live stream because now I forgot the other stock that um, I added to my watch list. What was it? Let's see if I can go. The one that I saw potential in. Uh... Oh, there it is. B-I-O-A. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do one more and then we'll end it there, guys. Let's see. All right, I'm going to pick the most common one and if um, I'm not going to go, like, I already did BIOA, bud. Oh, you guys, thank you for calling that one out. Yeah, it was BIOA. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Ricky, got any? No, I don't have any of that, Matthew. <laughs> Um, all right, let's do, all right, let's do two. It's going to be A, V, A, O. Am I showing my screen? Nope. I'm showing myself. I'm sorry about that guys. It must've been pretty scary. Oh, that's our group chat. A, V, A, O. Perfect. Okay. Um, no, it's, Looks like he has a nice little, like, uh, once it breaks above this 250 um, support, it has a nice little, I mean, it's it's done it once before, but I think it's more on the oversold side. It's, you know, if it breaks below, it's not holding very well. Like, within the past couple of days, the margins aren't really there. So if you guys see, well, it is, I don't know. I just, let's see how they perform on the day. Yeah. 230, 250. 250 is a pretty solid support, but doesn't hold very well above it. So 230 it is. Yeah. So definitely does have profit margin. Um, I mean, that's no question based on its previous trends. It's just been on a downward trend. And then when you look at it um, at 180 day analysis, um, it's just way like overpriced, I think. Um, and it might be, just be flatlining and getting ready to come back down. And it has a has an earnings report coming up. So that's definitely, oh, that's soon. Um, so we'll have to follow up with that. I, I think I'd like to follow up with this one. Um, let's do one more. Dude, that's sweet. Congrats. What time is the morning live stream? So wherever it is that you're located at, um, market opens here at 6.30. So I go live at 6 a.m. So um, 30 minutes before the market opens. Okay, let's end it with that. Um, P-H-I-L. <laughs> okay, well, I'm definitely not going to trade this one just because it's such a low-cap stock, just not my style. Um, but I can see why so many people are talking about it. It's, it's obviously seen a lot of hype. I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of pump as well. Um, man. Um, yeah, just this isn't my style. Um, it most likely looks like it's going to most likely have a pullback. It does have nice little pumps, just not something that I usually trade. Let's do ZN. ZN has been on a consistent downward trend. So AVEO, this is kind of like where I see it. You know, it was like way overpriced. It's been peaking out and then it's heading back down to its previous support. This is kind of where I see EV, AVEO kind of heading to. Um, so you are. Um, this one just has been dropping, guys. Like I'm, I'm just waiting for the bounce. Like this thing has not even after its earnings report. It just didn't, um, if I remember correctly, some news was released that it didn't, um, one of its like type of um, products that they were trying to release didn't um, pass a certain type of 
um, inspection. Let me go ahead and go to the news. Yeah, plummet 61% after its clinical trial miss. So yeah, just some bad news with, with this type of company. And um, I'm just waiting for the bounce. It looks like it's trying to flatline, but if it breaks below $1, then that's a really, really bad sign. It has you know the potential to come back up. So it definitely does have a lot of potential for it to continue to pick back up. But guys, it's been on a consistent downward trend um, and it's not showing signs of upward momentum. So why risk it, right? Wait for the bounce and wait for the breaks of resistance. And that would much, I mean, that would show so much, so much more opportunity. Um, but that's really just it. So we're gonna end it there, guys. Whoa, what is that? Okay, it was just something I, I clicked. Um, so we're gonna end it there. So again, the stocks that I talked about, that the ones that I saw potential in that the members suggested. Again, we're waiting for the bounces on all of them, but a lot of them have to do with the earnings reports. And because they're way oversold, we're gonna be waiting for the bounce, waiting for the signs of upward momentum and the breaks of resistance. Identify the potential, manage our risk, plan out our trade, and then follow through and sticking to our plan. So that's all um, I'm gonna be doing. Save S Q M E E T J N U G instead of J D S T unless J D S T breaks above um, seventy dollars and then A A O I once it bounces B I O A once it bounces um, and then C U R once it bounces. So again, a lot of opportunity, but again, it could be a very slow week if none of these stocks bounce. So remember, don't force a stock if you don't see potential in something, then don't trade it, guys. And there's nothing wrong with listening to what other people are doing, but don't trade based on just their opinion. I can't stress that enough. If you guys are trading based on someone else's opinion, how can you imagine or make sense of being able to do this as a career, you know, in your office and doing it by yourself by mimicking others' trades? That's why I try to, you know, when I do call out stocks, especially within the Discord group chat or, you know, the TechBot Solutions group chats that we have, um, I, I I, I went for such a long time that I wasn't calling out where I was buying because I felt like so many people were just mimicking my trades and they weren't really learning how to day trade. And I don't want that. Again, I'm not here to tell you guys what to trade. I'm not here to tell you where to buy or where to sell. It comes down to just me sharing my best practices, what leads to my success, um, same as everyone else within the TechBook Solutions community. So I'm going to end it in uh, giving you guys some updates. If For all those that just want to head on out, um, we will see you tomorrow in our live stream. We're going to be going live 30 minutes before the market opens. So it'd be amazing if you guys can join us. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. It's that little bell. If you guys want to be alerted when I go live, that's usually just what I do. Um, and I do want to shout out again, Connor, which is our momentum trader, he just hit a little bit over 2,000 subscribers and it has to do because of all his hard work and his amazing content that he puts out. He's a momentum trader, so he has a more attractive style of trading compared to me. Uh, I'm more of a technical trader, so mine's a lot more, uh, a lot slower. Um, but again, mine's a little bit, I think, more consistent. Uh, but Connor is an amazing momentum trader. He has so many videos that he puts out that you know really just gets into detail on telling you guys on like how he finds it, you know, huge breakout stocks and stuff like that. Brad is one of our OTC stock traders and he's doing an amazing job. He's seen amazing growth within his own um, subgroup within TechBot Solutions, which is the OTC stock group. One of his traders was on his first trade, made over $28,000 and he makes a video. He talks, it's obviously his most popular video, but it has to do with, you know, a very simple idea. And that simple idea is, you know, he, it's, it's what we try to do within our group chats. And we try to promote a welcoming environment for both new and experienced you know, traders. We try to lead by example, and then other people start to follow and help us throughout this whole process. So I wanna shout out all the people that have helped us so, and again, guys, we're doing this all for free. Connor is not getting paid through me. Um, you know, Like all the guys that you guys see that are helping, like Dimitri, that always dedicates time out of his days, um, like Dettel, uh, Kettle Cooked, I always see you super active within our group chat. I can't thank you guys enough. Like we have an amazing community and we do this all for free. I can promise you guys that all those that are helping us right now and really trying to like increase the, the quality of information being shared and that those that are going out of their way to help us, I, I'm, I'm telling you once we have our own TechBot Solutions website and once we start, you know, asking for admins to, you know, start applying, we are going to start paying these uh, specific individuals because we want them to be compensated for the hard work and the time that they dedicate to making this group such an amazing community. And I can't thank them enough right now because they go out of their way without any reward and, and just that personal reward of 
you know, just wanting to help people out. And that's something that we all have in common. So if you guys have time and you guys see someone going out of your way to answering some of your questions, please, if you can do them, uh, do me a favor, just thank them for their hard work and thank them for their time. That's all I can ask. And um, that's, that's really just it. So I can't thank you guys enough for everything it is that you guys do. I hope you guys see value in our community. Again, it is a free platform. Um, and I will be giving you guys an update on the TechBoot Solutions website. My developers did just let me know that they should have part of the beta version available during mid to late August. Um, so with, just within uh, the next couple of weeks. Um, and then for all those that were requesting, again, I don't have, like there's some person that was impersonating me with a fake email that used like my YouTube cover image and stuff like that and was asking people for personal information. Again, I don't ask anyone for anything. People always reach out to me and then that's how I answered um, or answer. I just created a new email and it's the official TechBuds email and it's info at techbudssolutions.com. And you can find that if you go on my YouTube channel. I think I should just guide you guys because some of you um, are just, you know, it might be a little bit difficult to find. So if you guys go to the TechBud Solutions, um, my TechBud Solutions homepage, right? And then you guys go to the about. When you guys click on email, it's info at techbudsolutions.com. And you guys can click email right there. These are my Instagram um, for TechBuds and myself. And then this is the Facebook group. This is how you guys can stay connected. So please make your way over there. If you guys want to reach out to me, then please feel free to do so. But the reason that I'm saying that is because I promised a couple traders that reached out to me that because I've been jumping on so many calls, or meeting up with so many people. Like I have a meeting in about 15 minutes um, with another individual that I'm gonna meet up with lo locally here in Arizona. I want to be able to do this for so many other people, part of TechBud Solutions. But there, there's a different approach that I'm trying to take and I'm gonna make a specific video about, um, about this specific topic. But all I'm gonna say is that I'm trying to develop uh, a type of way that I can have one-on-one -on -one calls with individuals that want to ask, answer me or ask me specific questions, not only about trading stocks, but about, as you guys know, I mean, trading stocks is only a, a fraction of what it is that I do. I think a lot of more people now are starting to see that I'm more of an investor um, in the aspect that I invest in people's like businesses, as well as, you know, I have investors that invest in me and then I kind of disperse that money and invest in other people's ideas and then, you know, see a return and stuff like that. So for those that want to jump on calls, those that think they have certain ideas or opportunities that they want to run past me or want, you know, just my own opinion, I am working on a platform to be able to do that. And it is just going to be, um, a, like a, a voice type of, or not a voice of a, a video conference option. Um, for those that see value and for those that want to dedicate maybe 30 minutes to an hour and jumping on a call with me, I will have a specific like platform for that. And, um, that, that's all I wanted to let you guys know. I'm still working on the lesson library and that has to do only specifically for those that are focused on trading stocks. And it's going to be a full on just lesson library that will be, kind of provide the whole A to Z on what has led to my success, the complete fundamentals and basics of trading to all the way, you know, capturing my live trades. So because I cut my live streams within YouTube channel, um, so short, I move right over and start filming myself. And then that's when I start kind of like capturing my own trades and stuff like that. So I can post it for the lesson library. And then that's going to be available within um, one and a half weeks to two weeks. So just wanted to keep you guys up to date and letting you guys know that I am working on stuff aside from just the website to make sure that once we have the website, that the information that is being shared is so much better quality because we have people going through certain filters of information that once they go through them, they already have a better understanding on, you know, what it is or what they need to do to be a successful trader, or at least have a general understanding to not make such of the common uh, mistakes that everyone else is making and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's the whole point of this group for me to tell you about my mistakes and tell you about my best practices. So you don't have to repeat the mistakes. And so you can only focus on what I do well, but also like, like you guys saw Levi that ends up, you know, he's one of our members that travels the world and, and just trades and he didn't just learn from me, but he learned from so many other members and then develops his own unique style of trading. So that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I hope you guys are excited for that. For those that see value in those specific, you know, service, then, you know, great. Um, I'll keep you guys up to date on that, but that's really just it. So I'm going to end the live stream here and I'm going to answer some of your questions within the live chat. I have about four minutes, no, like three minutes before I have to head on out. So I want to thank you guys enough. Um, I want to thank you guys for your time. I want to thank you for dedicating time to, for this live stream and for all your hard work. For you guys, it's time to go in out of your way and making our TechBud Solutions community that we provide for free for everyone to be such an amazing community. And um, 
I, I promise you that I'm going to continue working as hard as I can to reward you guys any way that I can. And if that's just me, like you know, meeting you guys or you know, actually compensating you guys, then that's something that I'm going to work on for you guys. But again, just know that right now we do it all for free, um, and it's an amazing thing. We're, we're seeing ex exponential growth. Um, and it's all because of you guys. So I just want to let you guys know. So thank you guys it is for everything that, is that you guys do. Continue sharing best practices. Continue sharing mistakes. Continue helping one another grow and becoming the best one can be. And continue following your dreams and let your passion be what drives you to be successful. So like always, guys, let's make sure that we're in the year on a green note. Take care, guys.